Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back, and thanks for taking a breather with us. We know we could all use one. Burnout. It's finally getting recognition as an actual thing. It's not just a buzzword. It's not something made up. It's real, and it's more common than you may think, affecting people worldwide regardless of age or gender. You might you think of a candle's candle blackened, shriveled, worn out look. If, if you feel how that look looks, you can likely relate to burnout. These here are some ways to hopefully keep that candle wick conditioned, helping to avoid burnout. And the best way to figure out what is stressing you. We're going to use the word avoid, and just clarifying, avoiding a stressor is not the same as avoiding responsibilities. A responsibility needs to be done, but you don't have to go about doing it in a stressful manner. See what we mean? The best way to reconfigure this stressful process is whittle down and figure out what it is that's causing the stress. Here's a simple example. It's easy to say, this assignment is my stress. Getting it done is stressing me out. But when you step back, you realize the situation is more, I'm stressed because I feel tight on time, and I'm tight on time because I repeatedly chose other activities until there were only 24 hours left to get this done. So yes, you may require some time to practice self-awareness, as much as we never like to admit it. We sometimes build a whole lot of unnecessary stress for ourselves. So please don't do this to yourself. Number two, the cycle. I know, this sounds like we're suggesting you allow yourself to get more stressed, but we're not. Trust me, we're not. Burnout occurs because of prolonged, unending stress. It's essentially constantly treading water in the poor spot and never swimming to shore for rest. This is what we mean by complete the cycle. The book Burnout by PhD and DNA Nagoski twins describes the cycle generally as Enter the stressor, like tight turnaround times. Then, cortisol and adrenaline production are triggered from the stressor. This activates the survival response of fight, flight, or freeze. Impulsive reactive behavior happens to stop the feeling of which can be binging, eating, or streaming. We're not judging. And then completion is taking the step of meditative breathing, connecting with others, or other forms of emotional release. Burnout happens when you get stuck at the binging step. That impulsive action provides temporary, superficial relief. Just enough to fool many of us into thinking, Oh, we're all good now. Truthfully, the stress is still there under now, allowing it to continue frying and smoldering within. Number three. If you had nap time in kindergarten, don't you wish that was still a normal part of your day? Sleep. Sleep is wonderful. Sleep is also important. A solid, healthy stretch of nighttime sleep is essential to overcoming or avoiding burnout. Humans are generally not nocturnal by nature. We know this, yet we seem to be all too willing to sacrifice sleep as the first bartering chip when dealing with stress. We tend to think of sleep as a reservoir easily refilled with catching up on the weekend or sleeping in on vacation. Unfortunately, sleep just does not work that way. You can't wreck on the past sleep you lost by sleeping more in the future. So get a good sleep in the now. What is good sleep anyway? It's not that time you zoned out while reading, then woke up with a start when your forehead hit the desk. It is completing a full sleep cycle, including REM sleep. The result is you wake feeling refreshed and renewed. If you wake up still groggy or wanting to throw down in anger, you did not have a good night's sleep. To help you reach this fabled good sleep, employ sleep hygiene and prep. Hygiene is basically a condition conducive to maintaining health. So sleep hygiene is good sleep practices. Like no screens 30 minutes before bed and the room being dark, cool, and silent. Prep is what happens before the hygiene. Setting yourself up physically and mentally. So no numbing shortly before bed and perhaps a short session of meditation to quiet your mind. Your route is yours. These are just components. Find ones that groove with you. Release the oxytocin. Perform activities that help produce oxytocin. Yes, oxytocin, the love drug. Well, hormones, really. It's been found that various activities such as giving to others, dancing, working out, or cuddling with your pet all trigger oxytocin production. Know why we suggest this? Basically because the activities not only make you happy, but many of the activities can help others be happy too. Oxytocin is one of the big three happy hormones after all. 
It's been found too that this hormone can decrease stress and anxiety, so it gives happy and deducts stress and anxiety. Number five, and know that you are worth it. Those old shampoo commercials are a point. You are worth it. Yep, yep. Our last tip for today is to practice self-love. Self-love can help you extend compassion towards yourself, allowing you to perform self-care free of guilt or adding more stress. Never feel that tending to your own health is a waste of time or that you could be doing something more important. You are the most important thing to you. Your existence depends on seven stages of burnout. Which stage are you in? Number one, a desired level of high achievement. The first level isn't necessarily connected to burnout itself. You can be a high achiever who's still able to balance all of your work during the week. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to do your best in any situation, and people may appreciate it as well. Your desire to be a high achiever can be the basis for potential burnout later on, though. If you're the kind of person who desires a constant high level of success, this may be because you also feel a strong need to prove yourself. Proving yourself is a key thing that people often need when they're around others. The key thing to remember when wanting to prove yourself is that it's not just for one particular project. You most likely want to be successful with all sorts of different work. If others appreciate the hard work you put into something, this will potentially create an unspoken expectation on yourself. It can be created by others or even yourself. You'll likely desire to keep working harder and harder to maintain this initial success. It's important to keep track of why you're working so hard. Ask yourself, is it because you want to? Or do you think it's because you're expected to by others? Do you think it's because you're expected to by others? Number two, neglect. Do you find yourself forgetting to change your clothes from the day before? Did you forget to apply deodorant, brush your teeth, or even have a shower? Oops. Do you find yourself forgetting little details about your work? You may be becoming neglectful. When you have a lot of work to get done, sometimes you might become overwhelmed by trying to get too much done in a short time. There are only so many hours in a day. The burnout at this stage can be due to the fact that you may be too tired. If you're lacking in energy, you may be eating less than your body needs to properly function. Having less than three square meals a day not only affects your diet, but also how you generally feel about yourself. If you're avoiding meals, then you may become tired. This neglect can be so aggressive at times that you might be too tired to eat. Why? Because you're not eating in the first place. Does that make sense? Mm, think of a snake eating its own tail, also known as an autoporus. Oh, hey there. Did you relate to these two stages so far? Comment below. We want to remind you to take it easy, and if you're feeling burnt out, drink plenty of water and get enough rest because you deserve it. Also, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more content. Did you do it? It's okay. I'll wait. Done? Thanks. Now, let's move on to the nursery. Denial. Do you find yourself easily frustrated by even the most minor of inconveniences or the simplest of conversations? Is your first instinct at that very question to shout, no, no, I don't. If you're at the third level of burnout, you're probably feeling denial, even if you claim you're not. Here, you'll likely take issue with accepting responsibility for problems that you might have caused. Say you have an aggressive outburst at a friend during your morning coffee. This moment might shock your friend because it seems like such an out-of-character moment for you. When you're in denial, you're more likely not to apologize for your behavior. If your friend knows about your need for a higher level of achievement, they may call you out for this apparent burnout-based attitude. The denial may kick in where you insist that you're fine and not overworking yourself. Withdrawal. Number four. Do you often find yourself withdrawing from certain situations? If you find yourself denying the amount of stress you're under, your response may be to withdraw. The pain you could be ignoring can sometimes become so sharp and so great. The only response that you can think of may be withdrawing entirely. Removing yourself from the situation, and to a greater extent your emotions, is an important defense mechanism to recognize in yourself. At this stage, you'll likely ignore friends, family, and social functions. Do you find yourself ignoring text messages? It's normal to not respond to one or two texts here and there. Most people do this. If you're feeling burnt out, those one or two texts can become five or six, maybe ten or twelve. Burnout can cause you to ignore almost all of your messages, to the point that you feel overwhelmed by not texting even one person back. The more you let the messages build, the less likely you are to have to reply back. Withdrawal may even make you want to avoid going to parties. 
It takes a lot of energy to be in social settings for sure, especially if you identify as an introvert. If you find yourself ignoring contact with your loved ones, whether that's digitally or in person, it may upset your social circle. Number emptiness and depersonalization. The fifth level of burnout is definitely a tough one. Once you've removed yourself from your social life, you may begin to feel an overwhelming sense of emptiness. You may be unhappy with your job, for instance. If your work makes you feel entirely unfulfilled, it's possible that you've lost your own identity and sense of self along the way. If the work you do feels utterly soul-crushing, you may feel like just another cog in the corporate machine. As someone who's a hard worker, you may be more likely to become frustrated when all you do at your job goes seemingly unappreciated. Does your boss almost never say thank you? Do they only talk to you whenever they have a problem that needs fixing? Feeling unappreciated at work is a key factor in why people often quit their job. There's a common saying for this. People don't quit jobs, they quit bad bosses. Do you feel this deep in your bones? If your job is no longer satisfactory, you probably feel a lot less like an individual person and more of a collective conglomerate. Lost in the corporate shuffle. Talking to a friend or medical professional about how you're feeling may have a no depression and numbness. Do you feel empty lately? The irony of numbness is that there's no physical sensation in your body. How do you actually feel when you're numb? It may be hard to describe the exact sensation, but you certainly know it when it happens. The emptiness that can be experienced when you're depressed may be so great that you feel numb, even on an emotional level. If you feel numb to this scale, you may be more inclined to partake in substance and or drug abuse. This can lead to intense depression. Do the sails on your boat feel totally deflated? Do you find almost all of your motivation to be totally gone? When you're depressed, it can make you feel entirely lost and adrift at sea. When you're aimlessly drifting, it's because you don't have any wind to guide you. Depression can feel like all the wind is gone from your life. Exhaustion and collapse. The seventh and final stage of burnout is, you guessed it, the hardest one to deal with. These feelings can manifest themselves in both physical and emotional forms. When you are physically burned out, your legs can turn to jelly. Figuratively, not literally, thankfully. But the sensation of physical burnout can make you feel like all bone structure inside of your body has become entirely non-existent. Emotional burnout is a similar feeling to those pesky jelly legs, but instead it's your brain. If you're emotionally exhausted, then activities you once used to enjoy, like reading a book or watching a movie, may no longer be fun for you. They may become more of a chore than something that you used to do to rest and relax. It does not matter if you're in school or at a job or trying to get your own business going or a mom or a dad. Burnout is a creeper that can pounce when you least expect it, happening to the seemingly healthiest of us. We mean you're not alone or defective or inept. Burnout essentially means that your own personal care has been sacrificed in pursuit of outward reward. Whether that pressure has been put on you by yourself or by a boss, take a moment to realize that nothing's worth your health and that you deserve to be happy. No matter how much the bottom line is going to affect quarterly profits, you got this, and we're with you on that. Did you see or hear something that could help you or someone you know? Comment below and give us a like. Take a break and reach out to others for help. And we hope you found something helpful here. Maybe we'll take a breather together again next time. Thanks for watching.